Hello, hello. Welcome to the Five Talents Podcast. I'm your host, Abel Pacheco. I interview the top commercial real estate investors and industry experts so you can learn from their experiences. So if you're an investor, a high W-2 earner or real estate or tech sales professional that wants to invest in real estate without having to manage properties or leave your day job, then this podcast is for you. Or if you're already investing in real estate, but you're doing it part-time and you wanna become a full-time multifamily or full-time commercial real estate investor, this podcast is for you too. You're gonna learn a ton. You will learn from real life multifamily investors and other professionals in the industry. They're gonna share their blueprints for success and I'm super excited that you're here. So I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, hello. My name is Abel Pacheco. Welcome to the Five Talents Podcast. So I'm your host, and I, I have uh, the pleasure of introducing to you Eric and Tamara Lieber. Thank you very much for joining. How are you guys? Good. How are you? Um, We're great, thanks. Thanks for having us. That's great. Thank you very much for joining. I, I, uh, for, for the audience and listeners, I heard Eric and Tamara on another podcast. They were being interviewed, and I just love their story. I thought they were a, an amazing, you know, couple to have on the show. And, you know, this is my first uh, couple interview. So hopefully there's more, if you know any other good ones, refer them to me as well. But, you know, the, their story is amazing. So let me kind of prep a little bit and then I'm going to turn it back over to you for, you know, really, you know, your, your introduction. But so Eric and Tamara, both the VP of operations for Madre Consulting uh, and Construction, uh, the president and vice president there, both managing partners of SLS real estate holdings. They, they both grew up working in family businesses. So they have that mindset, that background, um, working in engineering for 20 years, 15 at GM. That was Eric. You did a little bit of buying and flipping on the side. And then Tamara, you've been a realtor for more than 20 years in both residential and commercial experience. So you have your real estate mortgage and builder's license. And so that kind of culminates till right now doing multifamily in a 70 unit property uh, under a JV. And this is not a small percentage of a, uh, of a pie. You know, they are really the, the, you know, tip owners, there's a partner, it's a JV, but they're the owners of a 70 unit property, which is uh, there's not 50 people partnered for a small piece. They're, they're the owners here. So I, anyways, thought it would be an amazing uh, couple to bring on. So very nice to have you. Thanks for joining again. Like I said, thank you very much. I'm sincerely appreciative. Thanks for having us. Yeah. So why don't you tell us, you know, tell us uh, in your words, a little bit about you guys, uh, how you kind of grew up in the real estate and what you're doing now. I'll let her start with that. <laughs> well, I've uh, been around real estate. I, I feel like my whole life, my dad, my, even my family, we didn't, we stayed in a house long enough for it to appreciate. And then we just kept moving and moving. And so I learned about, you know, just that property appreciates a long time ago. And then I had a love for construction. Um, I start, I have a finance degree. And so then I got into real estate mortgage lending and then I just, that led to real estate. There was a big construction boom here um, 20 years ago and I solicited builders for mortgage financing. And then I ended up with a great opportunity to sell the new construction homes direct. And I uh, did that for my first seven years uh, ish of the 20 um, plus years that I've been a licensed realtor. And then uh, I actually had the opportunity of meeting my husband sold him a house. Nice. That's right at work. I love it. <laughs> so, you know, real estate's been generous <laughs> and uh, in many ways. And so then that led to just various things. And then the downturn, um, I diversified into real estate lending and actually some credit repair um, when people were losing their houses, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And then um, investing all in between there um, of you know, from tax foreclosures to flipping. And then along the way, uh, I think it's about five years ago, got the, my builder's license. Uh, that's awesome. Congratulations on all of that. And, and definitely see uh, real estate from more than a few angles. Uh, I have, I have a good friend and, and he said, uh, 
if you want to, if you're going to be, you know, really successful in real estate, like you need to be in real estate. <laughs> and he was saying all right. the different angles, there's so many different ways to, to be in real estate and you know, why, why right. not, you know, use them all, leverage them all at the, right. so that's great. So how about you, Eric? Um, well, I grew up in the family business. Um, my dad was doing lawn irrigation landscapes work. And so I grew up doing that from about 10 years old. I started working with my dad. Um, he had rental houses. So kind of the same thing where I kind of learned early on that you got this rental income. Um, and then went, started uh, engineering, um, job hopped a little bit from suppliers to here to there and finally ended up at General Motors and just, you know, my first house I bought, I house hacked before it was a house hack. Yeah. Right? Before I mean, there was a term, that's what you did. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I right. mean, it was literally, I bought the house for like 80 grand and lived in it and renovated it and added a bathroom and sold it for like 180 and bought a house built with her. And that's why I met her. And, um, <laughs> you know, started buying flipping houses on the side and condos and different things we could find. And, um, and then I just got to a point where corporate America, I went, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> and that was as an engineer, uh, yeah. as an engineer. And then your 15 year run at GM that all of yeah, this stuff. I, I walked in one day and I put my laptop, my phone and my badge on my boss's desk and said, I quit. And, <laughs> and he freaked out and he's like, you can't do that. And I'm like, I just did. And I he, just did. He goes, you can't do that. And I'm, I'm like, okay. And so they hauled me in a conference room. And next thing I know, I'm sitting there with the director and my boss and the HR and they're going, well, if there's an issue, you know, you, we have options. And I'm like, okay. I'm there like, is an issue. I'm tired of my job. Yeah. I'm like, there is an issue. I'm tired. Yeah. And they're like, well, you can work part-time. And I go, okay, I'll work part-time. My boss goes, well, you can't do that. I said, well, then I quit. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> wow that was awesome you, and, uh, you just have like this uh this dream scenario for like i, I don't know how many people that have just listened to that they're like i just wish i hope i'm in that <laughs> position one day to like actually do that so yeah. anyways that's awesome and i came home and i told my wife and she freaked out <laughs> oh, you didn't tell had, her before you <laughs> i love it <laughs> I and, had, and had unimaginable fear. And that's, um, a, and that's embellishing <laughs> just a little bit. I so, think I knew you were going there then. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. You knew it was coming. You just didn't know the day, huh, Tamara? So, well, and I, yeah, and, I, and my dad wanted to retire. Uh -huh. So my dad had started this business, worked in it for 45 years. At 80, he said, I want to retire. Wow, yeah. <laughs> and um, he said, I'm just going to shut the company down. And I said, why would you do that? I said, you got... 2000 customers, you, you know, that you, you service. And he's like, nah, I'll just shut it down. And I'm like, no. So I took over the family business. Mm. So I wasn't just like walking away and going, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, and I did that for a couple of years. We sold it. We were buying houses, you know, stuff in the winters cause it was a more seasonal business. Um, and met our partner and then started doing multifamily, sold the business, jumped into multifamily and haven't looked back. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Well, congratulations on, uh, I know this, you know, for some people, I'm not sure if you were in that position, I was worried, scared, fearful, all the mindset. And I'm like, Oh, yeah. you know, just to make a, a move. It's, uh, it takes a lot of courage and, and, uh, you know, congratulations. Yeah, to both you guys. yeah because you're, you know, it's when you have a W2 job and it, you know, IT engineer, I mean, you're making good money. It's not, you know, you're not making $15 an hour or $20 an hour. I mean, you're making decent money. Mm -hmm. and you have insurance benefits and you have vacation time and you have, you know. Yeah. Um, so to walk away from that, you know, and I, I mean, I had a bunch of friends that I'm really no longer friends with because when I walked out, they said, oh, you'll be back in six months. Yeah. And I said, no, I'm not. Like, like I'm out. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not coming, I sink or swim and I'm like, I'm not going to fail. And yeah, it, you know, you have to have a very, very, very strong self belief in yourself, right. That you can do this. Mm -hmm. um, 100%. I, I love, <laughs> I love hearing that. That's absolutely, you know, in, in, in any undertaking, right. Yeah. Um, it's that right. mindset, you know, so if you're listening and you're not, you know, going to be the, you know, 
next owner of a 70 unit apartment complex, you're probably maybe looking at like financial freedom. Part of it is uh, having the courage to say, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to figure out this investing thing and I got to figure out a different way. Otherwise, you know, I may never retire the way I want to. And so, yeah, just having the courage and the belief and your, your steadfastness to go, go after what you're going to get, you know? So I love it. So that kind of leads us, you know, we, we talk about commercial real estate. So a little bit of mindset, you know, I'd, I'd love to hear, you know, about your first multifamily deal. So a lot of years, single family, I did the same. And, you know, you, you made this leaf leap or uh, you had an appreciation for multifamily or what was it that prompted you to say, you know what, we're going to go, go from single family to, into the 70 unit five building property and, and just get after it. Well, it was, so the company I took over, um, actually my father's very first client mm -hmm. was a commercial real estate broker. Okay. For like 50 years. Okay. And he, and, and the ironic part about that was he was actually my last customer that I actually serviced yeah. before I sold the company. So he was the first <laughs> customer and the last customer. Um, wow. So I just started talking to him and, and my dad, you know, I started talking about wanting to buy apartments and whatnot. And, you know, it's like, I don't even know how to do this. Right. Like I was always in the impression. It's like, Oh, you need experience or you need a lot of money or, you know, it's like, um, and so my dad goes, Oh, we'll talk to Mel. He's a, a, a commercial broker. And I'm like, yeah. he is. He goes, yeah. And I'm like, well, how come you never went into these? Oh, I just never thought about it. I'm like, <laughs> You have all these, you know, and it's just, you start, you start going, dad, you have all these people in front of you as, as, resources. as resources and you never mm -hmm. tapped into it. Um, yeah. So I reached out to him and we met and had lunch and started talking and, <clears throat> um, and then he introduced me to some other people um, that had a lot of doors. Um, and when I say a lot, it was um, the one guy, his name is Michael Berger, who I think at one point owned 16,000 doors. A lot of doors. A lot of doors. <laughs> Just a couple. <laughs> and he introduced me to him and we actually lunched with him. And I was like, okay. Um, so then Mel had a client that had this 20 unit. And so my dad and I were going to try and buy it. And then my dad got kind of wet, cold feet and said, ah, I'm not, I don't want to do it. You know, I'm, I'm 84 years old. I don't want to do it. Right. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, Which I can appreciate. Right. And so at that right. point, I had, we'd already met our partner. And we had partnered on some single family stuff. And he was like, I really like apartments. And so I started talking with Mel and I'm like, would the guy be interested in a land contract versus an outright sale? And so the owner of the property finds out that I was an engineer at General Motors for 15 years mm -hmm. and was engineering for 20. Well, turns out he was an engineer at Ford for 17 years. Wow. And this was his first commercial property he ever bought. Right. Yeah. And he owned it for like this time, 40 years, I think. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So Tom calls me and out of the blue and talks to me for about an hour because he didn't want to sell land contract. After the phone call, he says, all right, I'll sell to you at land contract because our story is so parallel. Like it was my first commercial property. It was his first commercial property. He was an engineer for 17 years. I was an engineer for 15 years. I mean, it was just right. Yeah. So we ended up buying at land contract. And again, I have no, we have no experience. I mean, Right. At that point. I, I would, I would drive up to this property and just sit there in the parking lot and look at it and go, okay, I own this. What do I do now? <laughs> <laughs> I had no concept of value add. I'm like, I don't, I'm like, right. I'm like, yeah. Uh, well, I know it needs some work. I mean, it's well-maintained, but you know, and I would just literally walk around and kind of go, okay, I own apartments. Now what? What do I, <laughs> Man, you, I mean, you jumped in with both feet. I love it though. Yeah. I mean, look, yeah, I mean, we say we jumped in the deep end. Yeah. I mean, people sit there and they go, what book, what books did you read? I'm like, uh, none. I just, yeah. I literally jumped off a cliff and went, Hey, I'm here. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it was in my partner, like I said, and, and there's growing pains and you, if, if you've been in deals and partners and joint ventured and stuff, you know, th there's growing pains in any relationship. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and like I said, my partner, he was from a uh, uh, appreciation market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He didn't understand a value add market. Right? Sure. Yeah, he bought, of, bought a while back for anybody listening the appreciation market. He bought a while back and through the nature of appreciation through the years, the property increased in value and so did rents and you didn't have to do a whole lot of work. It happened for you, which is right. a very real thing from like, you know, pre, uh, pre 
I don't know, from the 90s to 2008, 2008, there's a crash. And then, you know, we have been in an appreciation market since then too. So anyways, go continue, please, uh, Eric. So, you know, he, he, you know, I was like looking to him for like advice. Cause I was like, again, I don't know what I'm doing. Right. I might mean, like, yeah. I've had rentals, but you know, suddenly when you're dealing with a part, everybody goes, Oh, well, what's the difference between a single family rental and an apartment? Now, there's a lot of difference, right? Yeah. I mean, you're dealing with tenants that live on top of each other, behind each other. Right. Mm-hmm. where a single family home is just, you have one tenant. Right. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. and I'm like, it's just a different animal. And then, you know, if your boiler goes out and you have no heat, well, you got 20 people calling you, not one. <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we made a lot, again, a lot of mistakes, obviously mm-hmm. not knowing what I know now in terms of, you know, and what I'll say is, I mean, it's, it, you can do it. I mean, I, I, we've managed to do it. So mm-hmm. it's not impossible. Yep. Yep. But I would, I would, looking back, I would much rather have a mentor that, you know, had more experience in a value add type or, or a forced appreciation type market. Like, here's how you do it. Yeah. Right? Here's how you do it. Yeah. Um, because, you know, we've struggled in terms of the property because we've been doing it in an appreciation way, which mm-hmm. you can't do in a, in a value add market. It's very hard. Right. Yeah we've managed and we've been fine yeah. and it's, but you know, you just go, okay, lesson, learn, lesson, learn, lesson, learn, lesson, learn, lesson, learn. Um, <clears throat> and then when you start meeting other investors, you know, I'll sit there and shake my head and go, yep, done that. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's a mistake. You don't want to do. Yep. That's, yeah. you don't want to do that. And I'm like, um, so I can't, you know, I've, I've said, I get my master's degree in, you know, basically what not to do in investing Yeah, with apartments. Right. Yeah. Well, um, let, let me pause you for a minute too, because I think these are all really great aspects, uh, mindset for somebody that's listening today. Uh, and you want to be a new general partner. Uh, a lot of times we can spend so much time, effort and energy learning in education in analysis. Uh, they say analysis paralysis is not just for, for real estate. That's for anything. If you don't ever take action, you know, you've got all this mindset that, you know, it goes to not, you, you, you're wasting a lot of time and right. um, as opposed to taking action. Now, I, I think what Eric, you know, kind of mentioned, right. I, I would much rather have had a mentor and a coach. If you can put those two things together at the same time, mm-hmm. education and action, you can literally go learn something and apply it tomorrow. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and there's something said, you know, uh, something that can be said to that, but like, let, me, let me also hit on uh, power of networking, right? Because, you know, Eric and Tamara found their first deal with a source that was right in front of them, that was in front of their father for, for years, or your father, Eric. And that network was always there. You just, like you said, never really tapped into it. And the moment you have a different mindset with, you know, your net worth is in your network, then you say, oh, there's an expert, which clearly he had 20 years of commercial ex- expertise and you tap into that. And now you're meeting somebody that's just like you. You get a great deal under contract. They take care of you guys because you're, you're so alike. And, you know, they're like, oh, here it is. Right. So you've got to you've got to, you know, do a little bit of both. Take action. You know, if you hadn't looked at the 20 unit property, probably with your dad and maybe, you know, he wouldn't have backed out. You were kind of like, uh that first 20 unit option was your first one of your first actions as was the reaching out to the commercial broker friend of your families and you know continue and continue on so you know for anybody listening you just got to just take it for a moment like act move forward and you know don't don't look back right and then believe in yourself believe and tell, in yourself. People, tell mm. people what your goals are yeah. because you never know you think that that person you just never know who knows who that knows who. Mm-hmm. So tell, tell people what your goals are. Yeah. And then, and you know, I think it's natural instinct for people to want to help people. Yep. Yeah. A hundred, a hundred percent agreed. I love it. Thanks, Tamara. So y'all, y'all are in the deal now, maybe t- tell us some of those lesson learned. Like, you know, well, I realized, well, I think I heard some of them, but you know, maybe expand on this a little bit what were some of the things that you're doing now, some of the corrections, some of the activities that you weren't doing in the beginning now, now that you're doing. 
well, some of it was like you learn on a value add property. It's, you know, you want to come in basically and have a plan of attack to do the value add and you want the funding up front, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You, you, and you're going to understand that, okay, these rents are a hundred dollars or $150 below market. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you buy it, you can literally go in and, well, we can in this area, we can go in and bump the rents by 150 bucks, mm -hmm. right? There's nothing that says I can't do that. Mm -hmm. And just expect to have 40 or 50% vacancy probably pretty quick. Cause when we bought this property, the average tenant was there 15 years. Wow. Yeah. I, I had a tenant there literally <laughs> that was there 40 years. <laughs> and so, you know, they, they're used to paying this cheaper rent, right? Yep. Well, you come in and, and if you bump the rent, well, you're going to expect people to move, right? And you need the money there to carry it and you need the money mm -hmm. there to fix the units to then go in and you want to renovate because you want to be able to justify that higher cost, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we didn't do that. What, what, you know, my partner's attitude was, oh, you'd use the rent money to fix the property, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even me as an engineer, I'm like, you know, that, that doesn't seem right. Like, you know, like if you do, how are you ever going to get money out? You know, you're not going to cash flow the property then because you just take the money and you're just put it right back into the property. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but whatever, I didn't have the experience and I didn't have the knowledge base to go back to him and say, no, that's not how we want to do this. Mm -hmm. um, and again, because I was learning, this was literally my first property and I'm like, our first property and we're like, uh, okay. So, mm -hmm. you know, you just learn, you go, okay, well, lesson learned. You got to come in with the funds. Yeah. You know, you know, okay, at closing, I need a hundred grand after closing because mm -hmm. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do this, 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 and this. And I'm going to bump the rents. We're going to do this. We're going to have a vacancy. We're going to do that. And that's what we're going to, we're going to attack this hard and we're going to hit it hard. Yep. Um, and so, like I said, it, it's, you know, we've worked through it, but that was one of the big lessons that we learned mm -hmm. was, okay, like I knew at closing, I'm like, okay, well, we, we really need to do this and do this. And I had a plan because I've been doing real estate and I've been doing flipping and, you know, I can look at a building and go, okay. Five need, grand, 10 grand. Yeah, this, five oh, grand, yeah, 10 right. grand, this is 15 grand, you know, right? Yeah. Start and, to ballpark your, your, your yeah. capital improvements, that type of thing. And you go, okay, I'm, I need like 50 grand at closing. Yeah. You know, my partner was like, no, 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 no. Right. So you just learn and you go, and now he, he, and he's learned, right? Cause again, yeah. he, he's never been in that market. So he, so he had to learn and I had to learn. It was, it was, um, but again, it's also just staying positive knowing I'm pushing through this. I'm yep. not going to fail. Mm -mm. Yep. And cause there were days that, I mean, you know, you just sit there and you go <laughs> like, <laughs> like do, you know, um, but you know, you just push through it and you just got to have a really strong, like I said, you just push through it and believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I never really wavered. Right. Yep. Um, and it was interesting because our relationship to some degree suffered because I would never privately, even with her express my doubt. Right. Mm -hmm. She was here in, you know, like afraid this was never going to be profitable, afraid it was not going to succeed. And so then I would, you know, be the man and go, you don't believe in me, right? You don't believe in me. You don't believe in me. And, you know, and she was really just expressing fear and where I should have been more compassionate to her and go and, and showing my doubt and my mm -hmm. fear. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And just, be real. and just been real. And I wasn't, I, I just, I kept this front up that, you know, you just don't believe in me. And, and that's part when you, when you partner with your wife, you gotta be, <laughs> you gotta keep it real with each other. Yeah. So, a hundred percent agreed. And I, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, point this back at, at Tamara as well, sure. but, but, but first too, from my perspective, I a hundred percent agree with you. It's hard to do because I'm trying to be the man. I'm trying to be the provider. I'm trying to be the protector. And it, and if my wife, you know, sees doubt or fear or worry, then I feel like, Oh, she's going to feel doubtful you know, fear and, and, and worried as well. So I kind of have that same mentality because my wife has been, you know, my, my partner in real estate since we started. So since, you know, 2008, we bought our first house and kept going. So she's been along the way and now she helps me in my commercial real estate. She's, she's very strategic with who we partner and how we do it. And I ask her those questions 
and she puts in insights that I would have never seen before. So thank you, Lord, for, you know, a great partner there. But T Tamara, from your perspective, like, how, how do you see it? And then how can we, as, as the husbands, like in this situation, how can we improve? What do we do better? And this is more of a personal question for me, just right, to make right. sure I'm on point here. <laughs> it's totally fine. It's totally fine. Um, communication and to be mm -hmm. vulnerable is like totally fine. I mean, obviously not all the time, but however, just communication. And I think um, to pause, to press the pause button and to maybe remove yourself from like the typical place that you meet and to go someplace and like, you know, I hate to say it, but like a neutral, no, I don't hate to say it, but a more neutral ground than maybe at home. Um, I think then, it, you know, you, it's like you it's yeah. press, play, repeat, press, play, repeat, you know, that you can get into the same, um, the same system or the same conversation and, and instead of pressing pause and then thinking about it different or saying it different to your partner, uh, I just think that resolves a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, if you say it different or, you know, and then think about the other person for a second too sometimes. <laughs> you can get lost in the shuffle. Not that he doesn't think about me. I'm not saying that at all. No, but, but you just- No, you, you do. You have, to, you have to put yourself it's in your spouse's shoes yes. to some degree. Yeah. Right. It's impossible to do that 100, but just to call, you know, come to the other side or whatever you want to say. So yeah. not that there's sides, but you know, we work through it and it's, you know, or it, I think whatever, you know, you grow through what you work through and you know, you get, and you get stronger from it. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So I, I heard, let me summarize and let me rephrase back to you. I heard communication it's key communication. <laughs> being vulnerable, do that. Uh, sometimes pause and reset and change your literal view. You know, you get out of the house for a moment and go do that. And right. then uh, as you do that, you're going to, you're going to, what did you say? You're going to grow. Uh, you go through it. You grow. I, my whole, you grow through what you go through. I love, I mean, that's my, like, you, you know, grow through awesome. what you grow through. Miss right. Tamara Lever. There you go. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. <laughs> I, I like that. Well, may, maybe you have to make that the show title. <laughs> uh, you, you grow through what you go through. Hello, hello. You're listening to the Five Talents Podcast. I'm your host, Abel Pacheco. If you're enjoying this podcast, then I know you're serious about achieving financial freedom. Are you ready to create your own path through multifamily investing for yourself and your family? Then I know you're going to appreciate our investor's guide to multifamily investing. It's titled Tackling Commercial Real Estate the Easy Way. We use this guide to invest ourselves in $93 million worth of real estate. So we're gonna show you the basic mechanics of multifamily syndications and how to evaluate your next passive investment opportunity. So the best part, if you subscribe to our podcast now, leave us a review and a rating, I'm gonna give you a free copy of our ebook. So please take a moment to do that now. Once you've done that, go to 5 t cre.com forward slash ebook 5tcre.com forward slash ebook make sure to let us know you left a review and we're going to send you a free copy so thank you so much for subscribing to the five talents podcast we really appreciate it yeah that's awesome so you guys have definitely been going through and now uh there's a new mindset about you you have uh, you realize, oh, value add. There's an actual strategy behind this. You can raise capital in advance for the improvements so that you're not left trying to scrape by or trying to make this difficult. You're plan you can plan your underwriting. I think we talked about it previous, you know, before the show started. Uh, we talked about, oh, planning this stuff out through the underwriting. So uh, like, put on the new lens for a minute. What's going to change with y'all's business moving forward? Like how, how have you guys... Uh, you know, start to see the next steps in your careers. Are you going to go buy another one with another JV partner? Are you going to raise more capital? Are you going to try syndication? What's next on your plate? I'd love to hear that too. Um, well, it's, we're going to buy more. I mean, that's our, you know, 100. We're, we're right. not done. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> I love it. Yep. yep. We're going to do that. <laughs> as far as the joint venture, uh, you know, um, syndication models, whatever it's, you know, we're open to any of it. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I've, I've looked at some deals this year that 
would have had to have been a syndication model mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or you would have had to partner with several people that were probably very high net worth individuals, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and we're always, I don't want to say always looking, but if the right partnership came along or if somebody approached us and, and we felt comfortable, again, it's, it's you know, you know, you got to know your partner and you really need to understand their mindset. You need to know where they're coming from. You know, if you're going to partner with somebody, whether it's joint venture part, you know, you really need to know who they are mm -hmm. and, and you need to be able to trust the person. You need to, you know, um, make sure you're of the same mindset mm -hmm. or similar mindsets. Right. Um, so I've learned a lot in terms of partnerships and joint ventures through this experience with what we have. And I'm, and I'm very grateful for my, for our, for our partner. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm, I, I have the utmost respect for him. I have nothing but good things to say. Um, mm -hmm. Again, it was a learning experience for both of us in terms of his market versus mar our market and just understanding the two different sides, right? So, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so know your market. <clears throat> That's where wherever you're investing, right. know the market. Spend and some time there. Yeah, yeah, you guys are in Detroit. Yeah, we are in right? Detroit. And that's where you do deals there in Detroit. Right. Um, tell, maybe <clears throat> enlighten us a little bit about your market. Like what's going on there? I, I'm in Texas and, you, you know, I don't, well, know, I don't know much about Detroit, just from my, my travels years ago. And I saw, you know, the, how rough it was for a little while and it's improving drastically. Uh, yeah. Right? So so. The, the city of Detroit, I mean, in the core, right. Yep. So in the core, there's a lot of new development going on. Tons. And it, I mean, and you have, um, the, uh, Dan Gilbert who owns, uh, rock Quicken loans, Quick and loans right. Okay. Yep. You have the Illich family that owns, you know, the Red Wings, the Tigers, Little Caesars Pizza. Wow. Um, you have the Ford family that owns the Lions, and, and they've bought up hundreds of buildings down there. <clears throat> right? Smart, smart well, move. Yeah. I mean, and so. The, and there's major renovation, major it, loss, new major. New construction going I mean, crazy just, in the city of Detroit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so, you know, we've invested in what they call the inner ring suburbs. Um and because Detroit right now is so, is so expensive to get into right now. I mean, if you wanted to buy in Detroit, you should have bought there five, six years ago. Yeah. You would have been on point. You'd have been on point. Right. You'd have made a, you'd have made bank. Bank. Yeah. Um, now it's to get in, you better have some really, really deep pockets in Detroit. Um, in the, in the, the you know, the hot, uh, in the areas. hot area, yeah, the hottest right. areas. Cause there's still, <clears throat> yeah. Areas um, that... So, you know, there's, there's a lot of new construction going on around mm -hmm. here. Um, Amazon, the one apartment complex we own in the city of Hazel Park, Amazon has built four warehouses. Literally, I walk out the front door of the complex and they're right there. Mm -hmm. And um, it's 1.7 million square feet is what Amazon's doing. There's new construction apartments going up down the street from these. Mm -hmm. um, and we bought the property three years ago for 1.2 for, for basically 50 doors. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the property next door to us sold last year for 24 for 1.3. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, that one's going to be a good deal. So, <laughs> and they've put a million dollars into the 24 unit. Okay. So, yeah. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of, of rent growth growing on here. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of it construction. It's, crazy um but i know detroit doesn't get the love that a lot of cities do because of demographics and i understand that I, i've started learning about that more about demographics all right um and the population shift you know obviously the warmer states south right mm -hmm. uh, you know texas is i know texas is booming and new mexico and atlanta and all that um but i still look at detroit and i go well we got the big three and, and the Great Lakes. And the Great Lakes. <laughs> and yeah. you get a lot of suppliers for the big three. Yep. Um, so there'll always be people moving here. Yeah. Right. Um, it may not have the demographic shift that you see into the southern states, but um, for right now, we're, we're, you know, I'm not going to necessarily argue with it. Um, but like I said, we've started looking at other markets, but, you mm -hmm. know, I have a lot of love for Detroit. No, that's, that's awesome. Oh, well, congrats. No, there's a lot of people that don't. I do. <laughs> yeah. Well, it sounds, sounds like you got uh, an amazing future ahead of you. Like you said, now you're going to buy more 
open a syndication, open a JV, open for the right deals. You know, now your eyes are open to, okay, we can look at bigger properties. We just have to syndicate them for some capital and definitely point it towards Detroit. Great market uh, data points. And uh, yeah, that's where, that's where you guys know. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, if a couple quick questions, right? For somebody that's listening, that's trying to get into multifamily, whether a passive investor or an active investor, give me a, a nugget or two. Like what's, you know, maybe the, the best fast forward button, the best cheat code, the best, you know, easy way in to like to, to take action today and say, you know, if I had looking back on it, if I had to do something over, I would have done, you know, one, two, three first. A any ideas there? Uh, <clears throat> I don't. I would say network more. I would say network. Network more. Yeah. Okay. Network. Yeah. More. Network more and at a faster pace, and um, and maybe I don't know in what order that you know. I mean, maybe just express to people, talk to people, because you never know who you're talking to. Yeah. So true. Right. I mean, I met. I mean, a, a gentleman I'm friends with now. I, I he 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 came to give me a quote on concrete at one of the apartments, mm -hmm. and if you'd have seen him, right, he pulls up in a 10 year old minivan wearing clothes with concrete stains on him. Oh yeah. And he's a concrete guy. <laughs> yeah. When you're talking to him, he owns 35 industrial buildings. I love it. I love right? it. Golly. Um, so now we're friends and now we're looking at industrial properties and stuff to partner with. You know, it's just, you yeah. just never know. You can't judge a book by its cover. Yeah. Right. And so it's really just talking. I mean, you really network and talk to people because you never know who, you know, would go, Hey, I'd be interested in that. Let's do this. And you, mm -hmm. and they may have the money or they may know somebody that did it and then can hook you up. I mean, part of it is actually, like you said, it's, you can get analysis paralysis. And in this business, it's, there's so many things you can, I mean, you know, there's so many things you can read seminars, webinars, and I'm all for it. I'm all, I mean, I try to learn something every single day. Um, however, y you can overthink it too. So, mm -hmm. well, and, and it gets overwhelming, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you start looking at properties that are a million, two million, three million, four million, seven million, ten million, fifteen million, and then number gets scary to people if you've never dealt with it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know the first time I signed on the dotted line, personally guaranteeing a million dollars. Yeah. At the table, everybody looked at me and they go, "Are you okay? You look like you're going to pass out." <laughs> <laughs> you know? so I'm sitting there thinking, ah, yeah, you know, like I just guaranteed a million dollars, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it was the biggest amount at that time I'd ever like personally guaranteed. Right. Yep. And I was like, don't worry about it. And <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I really was like, I love it. I love it. About. Like, you know, that's me. It's the property. We have a property. <laughs> it's like, it's, and, and now when you're, so and, awesome. now when you're renovate, like now we, we started renovating another property and you, and you start writing checks for a hundred grand and you know, now it's just whatever. I just, I mean, I start writing checks and it's like, whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, you know, you, just, you get used to it. Right. Yeah. But the initial phase is it gets, it's scary. I mean, yep. if you've never bought anything over your, like more expensive than say your house. Yep. Right. And I mean, in some areas, houses can cost $2 million, but exactly. I mean, if, if, if you're an average person and have a W2 job and you know, to, to sit there and look at, wait a minute, I, I'm going to try and buy this ass, this asset for $3 million. I mean, it's, it gets overwhelming, mm -hmm. but and you can, like you said, you can just be fair and not do it. Cause you're just, what am I going to do? And yep. frozen. frozen. Yeah. And so you just got to do it. You just got to network and just do it. I love it. Those are great. Those are two solid hundred percent great points. Uh, and what people, I think sometimes, you know, people are, if you're afraid to pick up a phone and, or introduce yourself or say what you're doing, you know, it's, it's much harder to sign on the line for a million dollars than it is to say, Hey, this is what I was thinking about doing. Are you interested? Are we, you know, want, want to have that conversation? So start small, take some action, call someone, uh, well, you know, reach out and say hello. And then it gets easier every time and every, every action gets a little easier. Right. And I was an engineer. I mean, engineers are introverts. Okay. Yeah. Definition. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's, you know, a year ago, I, had you approached me about doing a podcast, I'd probably been like, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> right that's awesome um what hey well, so on that point uh you know there are a lot of uh introverts i'm not one of them 
uh, uh, my wife is. So from an in, uh, in Tamara, you don't seem like an introvert either. She's not. She's the extrovert. <laughs> uh, uh, but you know, what what are what's a tip? You know, one or two, or just a single you know mindset for somebody that's introverted. They're worried about reaching out to somebody and they're not sure what to say. Like what you know, give them a give them a nugget here. You just, I mean, I still struggle with it, right? I mean, I got, like on Facebook groups or whatever, there's, I see posts mm -hmm. and I still struggle with sometimes responding or saying something because it's like, oh, they're not going to want to hear from me anyway, right? Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. that you got to get past that. Totally. And you got to go, I have value to add, mm -hmm. right? Um, and see, I was going to say, come from a place of contribution. Right. Is if you feel a need for anyone or if you say, you know, that's your, like during this pandemic, you know, um, I call it the care calls. And, you know, how many people like just, they want to hear, how are you? And then it like leads to, you know, you just care, you're like come from a place of care. Yeah. And that, in that you care about people. And I just think it dominoes. It's just, you know, so if you're coming from the right place and, mm -hmm. and within yourself, yeah, you know, just, and not from a place of, you know, where you're just out for what you want to get yeah. and where yeah. you want to go. If you're coming from that place initially, I think the rest just dominoes. Yeah. Well, in, in yeah, you just, sometimes it's just make a comment. Like you watch a video that somebody posts yeah. on Facebook or LinkedIn, right? And you just make a comment, you know, yeah. about a great story or, or, you know, a beautiful family, something, right? Uh-huh. That's how I met Eric. Uh, just, yeah. Uh, just well, not really. Up. Yeah. yeah exactly. uh, that's literally how I met Eric. I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get social, trying to push my stuff out there, yeah. do my little things. You know, I see somebody comment and, oh, thank you for liking my post. I really appreciate it. We get a little engagement once, twice. Yeah. I'm like, who is this Eric? And I go <laughs> search for him. And then I'm like, oh, he was on another podcast. And I, I listened to him there and I was like, oh, I love the story. And uh, and him and his wife and Tamara, thank you very much. And yeah. there you go. And that's that's it. You know, don't be afraid. Just just go and do it. Just engage. Right. Right. Yeah. Because you just, you never know where it might lead. Right. Yep. Right. And and if nothing else, it's you, you know, you gain a friend from it, right? You yeah. gain somebody you can maybe bounce ideas off of or you Cor can correct you know, pick their brain a little bit, right? Yeah. Right. Because nobody knows everything, everything. there is to know about mm -hmm. apartment investing. Right. Yep. And I love that. Uh yes, no one knows everything. And then, you know, to Tamara, your point is like you're coming from a place of value because you were providing value. There's somebody else that was in our shoes a couple of, like where we were a couple of years ago and you think, Oh, I don't have a lot to contribute, but really there's somebody that's even more green, more new, more or less experienced, whatever it is than you and your nugget could be the next like aha moment for them. But right. exactly. if you were fearful about sharing it, it would have, they would have never, it would have never had that moment. Right. And then like you said, come up, come from place of care. Right. Yep. Well, and then just, someone's I mean everyone has their first day that, that that's my you know sort of have that realization of that and just there's always someone younger than you and there's always someone older than you so like, <laughs> yeah you know wherever you are you are so awesome well, that's awesome well uh before I go uh I want to thank you very much for both of y'all's uh time I really appreciate it uh very sincerely um, humbled and appreciative that you would take the time to kind of interview and let our uh, let our audience kind of hear your story a little bit. So, what um, if somebody wants to get in your world? They thinking about Detroit. They want to go invest. They want to put some money in with you guys. They realize you're you know they're in your level. Whatever it is, they want to get in your world. What's the best way for them to reach out to you? Who, who do they reach out to, and how do they do it? Well, they can reach out to either one of us. You can do it on LinkedIn or Facebook. Um, you know, you can do my email if you want my phone number, call me. Um, if I don't answer the phone, leave a message. Cause I just, I'm right now, you know, I'm so busy, you know, um, I will say, I will admit my, probably my, one of my worst things is follow up <laughs> in terms of calling people back only because I'm so busy, um, doing a value add that it's just, you know, time constraint. Right. And I just yep. forget, um, it's not personal. It's just, I forget, um, but yeah, I mean that, so, you know, you can put my email out there, our email, um, phone numbers, right. Right. We haven't, we haven't done, we haven't done the website yet. We, like I said, it's we just okay. do our own thing and, 
Um, Go ahead and say, say, uh, say one out loud just in case uh, somebody's listening and they're not trying to jot it down, pen and paper. Okay. Uh, I'll give you her phone number. It's 586. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, uh, yeah, let me give you hers. Call her. I love it. So 586-322-9111. Right on. We'll get it. And I'll put your, I'll put the Facebook and the LinkedIn for those that are, not, uh, that are at the computer, scroll down in your show notes. I'll put their, their links there. You guys can reach out to them directly and, uh, it, you know, get in touch with them. I'm sure Tamara has some time to talk to you. Hey, Eric's busy on the property. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's part of the teamwork. It's part of the, team. part of the teamwork. I yeah. love it. I love it. Well, is there, uh, before I go, is there anything else that I didn't ask about? I didn't touch on. I didn't, you know, really, you know, hit on that you guys really wanted to share with, with anybody today. And, and, uh, you, the time is yours. Take as much time as you need. Just want to make sure I asked here. No, I would say, well, I would say, um, from maybe both of y'all, I'm going to give y'all both the time. Go, go <laughs> well, ahead. You Tara. Well, what's, um, one thing we didn't touch upon was that we did form, uh, the construction company to GC the property. Oh, so, yeah. uh, and that's where, um, assistant on that, I, I would, you know, I would interview if you're not going to go that route and, you know, have that arm of your company, mm -hmm. I, I would, you know, definitely do some deep dive into interviewing, um, the general contractor if you're going to take this kind of property on, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and ask the right questions, get reviews, get, you know, do, do a deep dive on that. Yep. Uh, and that's, that's the interview that I heard, uh, on Julie Holly's, uh, I think podcast interview was, you know, getting into the contractor side and Eric, you're a contractor, so it kind of definitely helps. And, uh, uh, kudos to starting the new construction company ourselves, taking that on. I love it. Thank you. My advice would be just do it. Right. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're thinking about doing this, if you want to get in a multifamily, you know, there is enough for everybody. Um, and just do it. I mean, just re start reaching out to people in the network, start networking mm -hmm. and, and just either passively invest or actively invest. I mean, it's, yep. it's really what you want to do. I mean, yeah. Um, but just do it. I mean, don't get past the fear. Yep. Right. Because, because the fear is, is what holds, people back i mean it really is yeah and and i can tell you when you're filled with fear you're going to be motivated <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love it you got a little, you got fear, a little motivation motivated. behind I gotta you make work. <laughs> a little extra motivation behind you that's for sure well that's awesome thank you very much for your time i sincerely appreciate it i'm humbled and appreciative and uh uh let me um you know, maybe give everyone our, our website is 5tcre.com. Uh, again, I'm Abel Pacheco. I'm your host for the Five Talents podcast. Uh, we focus on multifamily, commercial real estate, passive investing. Uh, if you heard something today that you appreciate it, please go into uh, the podcast, give us a review, leave us a five-star rating. If you think we can improve somehow, provide some feedback, just make sure you engage with us and we'd appreciate it. Uh, again, my name is Abel Pacheco. Eric, Tamara, thank you very much for your time. I had a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll hope to see you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Five Talents Podcast with your host, myself, Abel Pacheco. Each week, we're going to bring you interviews from industry experts and commercial real estate investors who followed their dreams and achieved massive success. Before you leave, let me ask you a few questions. Did you enjoy this episode? Did you learn something valuable? Was your mind stretched to what's possible and what you can achieve? Do you want other experts just like the one you heard today? If you answered yes to any or all of those questions, then please take a moment to subscribe to the Five Talents Podcast, give us a five-star rating, and most importantly, leave us a written review. Tell us what you liked, tell us your favorite guests, give us any feedback. I'm excited to learn and improve so you can get a more valuable show. So thank you again for subscribing to the Five Talents Podcast.